Hello everybody, welcome to Miss Wetton's Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at how you can explain why the boiling point of different simple covalent substances is different. So why has one covalent compound got a higher boiling point than the other? It all has to do with intermolecular forces. So if we look at a few simple covalent compounds, here we've got methane, ethane, propane, notice that they are getting bigger. The chain of carbon atoms is getting longer, the molecules are getting bigger. We've got butane and we've got pentane. So which one of these is going to have the highest boiling point and why? This is what we need to understand. And to understand that we need to know about intermolecular forces. So if we just have a look at some methane molecules, this is our methane molecule here. Um, in a liquid form, there would be quite a lot of methane molecules together and they would be being held together by these forces that we call intermolecular forces. So they're just forces of attraction. Intermolecular means between molecules. So they're forces of attraction between molecules that hold molecules together. You need to remember this keyword, intermolecular forces, it is really important. Now, in order to boil this compound, this is currently in a liquid form, we'd have liquid methane here. In order to boil this, we would need to overcome these intermolecular forces or break them. So we need to break the molecules apart so that they float off on their own. That would make it into a gas. So we want to break those intermolecular forces. And when we do, when we break enough of them, our liquid methane will boil and turn into gaseous methane. That is how you boil a simple covalent compound. So let's have a look now at propane, which has got three carbon atoms instead of one for methane. So it's a bit bigger. Now if you notice on the propane molecule, the intermolecular forces between them are much stronger. That's why I've drawn two lines instead of one. So the forces between molecules, these intermolecular forces that we have to overcome in order to boil them, are stronger. And that's because the molecules are bigger. Now if those intermolecular forces are stronger, that means we're going to need to put in more energy to overcome those forces. That means we would have to get that compound hotter before it would boil. So that gives it a higher boiling point. So bigger molecule, stronger forces, more energy needed, makes it a higher boiling point. Now you might get given a graph of this data where on the x-axis you've got the molecule size or maybe atomic mass or atomic radius or molecular mass and then boiling point on the y-axis and you'll have a straight line going up. They may some say something like describe the relationship between molecule size or atomic mass and boiling point. So what you'll notice here is that as molecule size is going up on the x-axis, boiling point is also going up. So as molecule size increases, boiling point increases. That is all you need to say to describe the trend. And it basically just means that bigger molecules have higher boiling points. And that is what you need to remember. Let's have a look at a question and have a go at this. So explain why the boiling point of butane, that has four carbons, is higher than the boiling point of methane. So if we draw our butane molecules here, and we draw our methane molecules. Our methane molecules are going to be much smaller. That is methane there, and we've got butane on the left. If we draw our intermolecular forces, have a look at the strength of the intermolecular forces I'm drawing for butane compared to methane. Pause the video and see if you can explain why butane's boiling point is higher. Okay, so butane's molecules are larger and that's the important part, because that means that its intermolecular forces are stronger. That's why we've drawn three lines instead of two. So it has stronger intermolecular forces. That means we're going to have to put in more energy. Remember, we always have to put in energy when we're boiling something in order to overcome those forces or to break them. What we're trying to do is put enough energy in by heating it up, enough that those intermolecular forces are broken and then the compound can be boiled. Now here's one for you to try. This is slightly different because it's not asking about a hydrocarbon, it's asking about group 7. So explain why chlorine has a higher boiling point than fluorine. Here are your chlorine and fluorine molecules. Let's have a think about which one is going to have a higher boiling point. Pause the video and see if you can work it out. So remember when we're boiling something, what we're trying to do is split up a few of the molecules. So we've got three chlorine molecules and three fluorine molecules. And remember that in between these molecules, there are going to be our intermolecular forces that we need to overcome. So you'll notice on the chlorine molecule, 
the intermolecular forces are much stronger than they are on the fluorine molecule. That's because the molecules in chlorine are bigger. So your first marking point would be to say that chlorine has bigger molecules and that means it has stronger intermolecular forces between those molecules. Therefore it's going to take more energy, you're going to have to put more energy in to overcome them or to break those forces. So we'll have to get chlorine hotter before it will boil, we'll have to give it more energy before we can overcome those forces. Okay, thank you for watching guys. Let me know in the comments what you want me to cover in the next video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.